Hi, this is Grow It, Build It, and I'm going to show you how to save some seeds today. Um, my blue labella and cardinal flowers are basically done, but I will show you how to save the seeds. And you're probably wondering, well, look at all these plants here. They all look the same. They're actually a mix of cardinal and blue labella. I'll also teach you how to identify them after they're done blooming in case you forget which is which. Um, that's about it. And what we have here is, uh, this one's actually a cardinal flower. Um, the leaves are very pointy, as you can see. The labella leaves are, uh, the blue labella leaves are much rounder, like that. Um, that's how you tell them apart. But inside here, in each little Sorry to get a good focus. Each little pod, there's hundreds of seeds. So you really don't need to save that much to get a huge supply. Um, if you just want to grow them the next year, you can uh, basically uh, sprinkle them where you want them, or you can save them and start them in pots. I'll probably try both this year since I have a large meadow in the back. I'm going to be uh, trying to fill in. Um, <laughs> I'm using my phone. So this cardinal flower, that's the stalk. All I'm going to do is uh, stick it in the bag. And uh, I'm going to do this for all my cardinal flowers that I want to keep. And I'll store them down in my basement for about a week. I run a dehumidifier, try to keep the humidity about 45%. Now this one I'm not going to cut yet because the seed pods you can see they're still green, so that's too soon. You only want to do this to plants that have, you know, dried brown pods. So this cardinal flower is, give it a shot of it. This one, the pods are all nice and brown. Uh, this one's okay to do. So we'll cut it. And I just dropped that one. And if you can see, that's hundreds of seeds on hundreds of seeds that just came out. <laughs> but that's all right. There's thousands more where that came from. So. Now for blue labella, I got to find one that's ready. The top of this one is okay. The rest of the pods may need a little more time. Just put that in and stand that back up if it'll stand up. So I'll cut a few more of these quick and then I'll give you a close up of the leaves side by side. I thought I'd show you kind of what the blue labella looks like. Now, this one is a very small specimen, but the bloom is absolutely beautiful on these. The uh, deep throat. Um, here pretty much means that it's going to get pollinated primarily by uh, butterflies or hummingbirds. Its cousin, the cardinal flower, this is the last one I have blooming. I should have taken this video about a month ago. This is late September. It's absolutely stunning when it's uh, blooming and red is like a magnet for drawing in um, hummingbirds. Absolutely gorgeous. But both of these plants kind of keep to themselves. They you know, I've got about 15 plants along this back border here. Um, so you can pack them in real tight. And uh, as long as you uh, don't let the bottoms get covered up in the winter, you see this little cl uh, cluster of leaves down here. Um, that will stay there all winter long. And it's important that it stays uncovered. Now, snow is fine, but you don't want it getting covered up by uh, fall leaves or mulch or anything like that. Um, in the wild, they grow along stream banks, um, and uh, the reason why they can do that is water will wash away any debris or refuse that might cover that up. But this is a gorgeous flower to have. Um, I uh, really recommend you grow it. It's very easy to grow from seed, very cheap that way, and uh, 
it'll give you a lot of color late in the season. When most other people's gardens are kind of on the wane, yours will be popping with color and wildlife. One more up close of the blue labella. Absolutely beautiful flower. Just interesting as heck to look at, I think. Each of the leaves, because um, that's w without blooms, the easiest way to identify cardinal from uh, blue labella is the leaves. And I had said that they were the cardinal flowers were much more pointy, and you can see right here there comes to a sharp point, whereas and narrow, whereas the blue labella seeds here are rounder. So if you're like me and you plant them all together. Um, and you're trying to collect seeds at the end of the year, that's what you need to remember uh, so you don't misidentify them. But, okay, thank you. Okay, I'm back. It's been a week. They've been, <clears throat> they've been drying in my basement where it's around 45% humidity. I run a dehumidifier down here uh, uh, pretty much all the time when I'm trying to dry seeds. Um, and the bags are clearly labeled blue labella cardinal flower because at this point I cannot tell the difference between uh, the seeds. The only way to find out what would be different would be to germinate them and tell by the leaves or by the blooms ultimately. Um, so since I don't want to mix them up, I'm going to set the blue labella a ways away from me. And what we're going to do, we're going to try my little uh, trick again with shaking up uh, shaking up the seed packets you got to be somewhat careful here the seed all these little brown pouches hold the seeds and there are thousands of seeds on this one stalk there's so much seed you would be amazed let me see if I can just kind of burst a couple of them those little itty bitty tiny brown flecks up there, that's the seed. It's like powder. It is so, so tiny. So, all I'm doing right now is kind of pinching each, I'm just kind of pinching each one of these. Just, just pinching. I don't really worry about grinding them up too much, just so that they're broken. I'm pinching them, I'm dropping them. This doesn't take very long to do. This one's just about done. Because we're going to do the same trick that we did with Echinacea with this. I'll just keep kind of discarding these as I go. I'll go a little faster. Now we will do the same trick I did with Echinacea. Look, see. Yeah, I'll show you later. That's seed. So the process for both cardinal and uh, blue labella is the same. You know, the pods are the same. It's all the same. Um, I, I 
tried to get a good shot of what the seed looked like in the dish here, and I wasn't really able to. Um, but I'll have a good shot at the end of uh, some stuff I did last year. Um, it's the tiny, small tiny oval pieces that you can kind of see are oviate shaped seeds. Uh, there was a close-up of it in the beginning of the uh, video. But once this is done, you basically just bag it up, seal it up, and keep it in a cool, dry place until you're ready to plant it. Um, they're wonderful plants to grow. It's really easy to uh, harvest seed from these, so if you know where they grow in the wild, or you have a friend or a neighbor where you've seen it, you know, just go get some seed and try it out. But um, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I'll have a few pictures of uh, uh, plants that I've grown um, to show you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. But here's a little clip from uh, my other video on this plant. And there with a pencil eraser, you can see the seed, how tiny it is. All those little light brown oval pieces, that's the seed. So thank you very much. Like, comment, subscribe, and go to growitbuildit.com for more info. Thank you.